father always used to say in a drought, the only bad silage was silage you didn't have. <laughs> I could say is, you know, over 50 years of doing it, we just see how, how well cattle do on silage compared to any other feed. And it can, it can be a complete feed. You know, if, even if you're feeding young bulls, if the silage is good enough, you don't need to top them up with anything else. My wife Jennifer and I uh, run the home place and uh, with the assistance of two employees. Uh, we also run the, the uh, Cumnock place from the home base and my oldest son James and his wife Sarah look after the, uh, the Gyra place. And I have another son Tom and his wife Nicole have got their own little place at, um, near Lismore. Tom's involved on a consultative basis with the whole operation too. When we first started we used to have little pits everywhere in every paddock, every block along the creek. Uh, it was good, uh, you'd put it in and you wouldn't have to travel more than a few hundred metres and you'd be um, at the pit. But then the drawback on that is you can't always access those pits. Even in the winter time, like in a drought, it can still get wet and boggy. Yeah, we soon learnt that you'd be better off coming from a, uh, a central location where you can, can operate. The one here, um, you know, it's close to the main uh, track system and it's uh, on top of the hill, so if you can't work there, you can't work anywhere. <laughs> If it's a big pit, uh, you probably need to access it from both ends. Otherwise, there's too much dead travelling when you're nearly when it's nearly empty. To uh, make sure you get all your your moisture content and everything right. We just have evolved over the years. We learned as we went. Uh, we finished up uh, wilting the the crop to get the moisture exactly right, and then come along with a uh, with a machine with a pickup front and fire it straight into the trucks. Whereas uh, years ago, I guess we, you know we, you'd be cutting direct and straight into the pit sort of thing and you know, the silage was a bit hit and miss. But with the modern gear, it's a lot easier to control your, uh, your product. You know, you, at the start, you might be wielding it for three days and it might get down to three minutes by the end of the season, just to get it, the moisture right. What I would suggest is, is to do it in a small way in, in the beginning and see how you go and feed it out and see what the cattle think of it and get your nutrition test done on the silage. There's massive problems with if you long-term storage, if you're going to put too much dirt on it. Uh, you nearly got to have an excavator. Uh, a lot of digging otherwise. And uh, wind can be a big factor in a drought. It seems to be always windy. If your silage is on the dry side at all, it will, you'll get a lot of waste. Even between the, the chute on the machine and the ground, it'll blow away and that'll, that'll be lost forever. It's like, like chaff. If it goes into a concrete bunker, you'll, you'll retain every every single straw. It gives you peace of mind more than anything. If we've got a few thousand tonne of silage up our sleeve, you can at least sleep a little bit. <laughs> you know, we've got 1,200 cows and they can eat an enormous amount of feed. Obviously in the drought times, we'll cut back on our breeders. Came out of the last drought with uh, no, not many cows over six year old. So when it, when it did rain, uh, you know, we were able to retain our cows for another two or three years longer. And, by 22 we had our full full numbers without having to buy anything. So that's that's a cost that's pretty hard to analyse really. 